Hi everyone, um, my name is Marcela Bonel. I'm a cloud software engineer working at Intel in Mexico and today I will present you a tutorial about how to use Shea SDK to interact with the OpenStack storage services Swift and Cinder. So before I start coding, let me explain a little bit more about these projects. The OpenStack storage, object storage uh, project is called Swift. And Swift allows you to have a redundant and scalable data storage where you can retrieve, leverage, and update large amounts of aesthetic data. And everything is managed by the Swift API. The two resources that you will find there are objects and containers. Objects uh, refers to data. Um, data could be images, uh, documents, everything that you need to uh, have in, in everything that you need in your cloud, something static, static, and containers are namespace that are used to group um, objects. So you can uh, place many objects inside a container and have a lot of containers in your cloud. So Swift is an it's a optional project for OpenStack. So before you start coding, validates that your cloud has Swift um, running. Okay, so let's start with code. As already mentioned, we will be using the Shade SDK for OpenStat, which is a, a Python library, very, very easy to use and with very clear functions. Okay, and so starting with the Swift um, code, First, we will start to import the shade library. Then we need to specify our cloud. For this exercise, I'm, I'm using the OSIC cloud. For the ones that don't know about OSIC, OSIC means OpenStack Innovation Center. So the, this is an, an effort between Intel and Rackspace to have uh, a lot of developers working on improved OpenStack. So they have a cluster for the community. It's open for everyone where you can uh, request access for to develop and test application. This is the form to request access to the OSIC cluster. And basically with uh, this uh, cluster, you, you, if they approve your request, you, you need to um, share with the community your findings, public, uh, the results for, for the applications, because at the end, this is for the community. So, when you request access, you need to specify the purpose of your project, uh, the OpenStack project that we will use by your app, the specification quota, and then a board will review all the uh, submissions and they will decide if, you, if they, they can give you access or not. So I'm using this community cloud OSIC for, for interact with Shade and Swift and Cinder. Okay, so let's start coding. Okay, starting with Swift. First, we will create a container. Remember, a container 
uh, is a place where you can group your objects. So I will create a container which name is my pets and the shape function is create container. Very easy, you only need to specify the name of the container. Then I'm using the list container functions where I will print all the containers uh, in my cloud. So this is my um, cloud, the ASIC. Okay, so as you can see, I don't have any container. So I will run my script. To create my first container and here we go we list them we can see here we have my pets ready so let's validate in the cloud yes I have my pets container ready no objects no size so next let's start uploading uh, objects to Swift. Now, I have um, a dictionary where I'm specifying um, the names of some images that I have in my file in my local file system. I have two images: my pets Euler, the Pomeranian, and an amazing goat. <laughs> so I want these resources available for everybody in my cloud. So I need to specify the name of the objects and the location in my file system. So the shape instructions to create objects is create object. And you only need to specify the name of the container, that will be my pets, the name of the object, and the file path. And then once they are created, I will list the objects that are inside my pets container. So create object and list object, very straight forward instructions with shape. Thanks, shape. <laughs> so let's update these images. I will run the script. They are creating and now here we go. We have the amazing goat and Euler the Pomeranian here. So let's see our, how looks our container. Yeah, we have these two objects. I can download one of them to validate that it's not corrupted. And yeah, we have Euler in the cloud. So this is the way that you can interact with Swift API through shape to create containers on objects. So also you can use shape have uh, more functionality about um, objects and management for uh, containers. So now with this code I will delete all the objects inside my pets container. So the instruction is delete, delete object. You need to specify the container name and the name of the object. And once that the uh, container is empty, you can delete it, then delete it with the delete container function, specifying only the name. So very, very straightforward. I will be printing goodbye and the name of the object when 
every time that Swift deletes an object in my cloud. So let's run this and it's deleting the goat and the Pomeranian. So no more Pomeranians or goats, no more pets in my cloud. Yeah. Okay, they disappear. So, very simple instructions to interact with Swift. Remember, with Swift you can upload them, um, update it, create many objects with um, organized by containers as your application or uh, needs. You can put images, you can put documents, any uh, a static file that you need in your application. It, and Swift manage uh, everything for you. I mean, you don't need to care about the uh, low level details for um, how the objects are replicated, the scalability, you only need to put the objects there, okay? So, very easy. And now, let's continue. with block storage. So the block storage uh, project in OpenStack is called Cinder. And by default, all the data in the OpenStack instances are stored on ephemeral disk. And this means that when you terminate an instance, all the data, all the data is stored in that instance will disappear too. Ephemeral, ephemeral disk um, are not persistent data. See, if you lose your instance, you will lose your data. So here is when Cinder uh, comes to provide uh, blocks, storage, persistent data. Uh, resources that uh, the OpenStack instances can consume. So with Cinder you can create volumes. Um, volumes is a persistent storage resource and you can attach a volume to an, a running instance in, in the same way that you attach a hard drive to a physical server. So you, you will have persistent data for your instance. And once you have a uh, volume attached to an instance, if that instance terminates, you will keep your data safe. You will not lose it. You will be uh, intact and you can create another instance and attach the volume and you will see the information without any change. So you don't we, uh, you don't have to be worried about losing instances because all your important data data have to be in a volume. So the um, the main resources that you will be interacted uh, with shape are the volumes and the snapshots. So the volumes are this persistent storage attached that can be attached to a VM. And snapshots are um, backups um, that can be created to, to have a specific version of a volume to restore important data. So you can have different backups, different snapshots during the volume lifetime. And, and you can create a volume from a snapshot. So you, you will have do data uh, ready and historic and historical um, backups. Okay, so moves to the coding. Um, I will use an a scenario to understand uh, more about the block storage from a developer perspective. So, for example. 
if you um let's imagine that you have a cloud application where one of your microservices is a database instance where you have MySQL running. So what happens if you have uh, just the MySQL instance running and something happened in that instance and, and you have to terminate? You will lose your database, you will lose your data, so your users will uh, will notice that and your application will fail. So with block storage, you can have a volume attached to your database um, instance. And for example, if you are using MySQL, you can uh, configure MySQL to a store all the data in the volume, not in the instance. So with this, you will be your data safe. And if something happened with your um, database um, instance, your cloud applications will create another instance, install MySQL, and then just to attach that volume and your application will have the database uh, ready for you, so your users will will not notify about this problem, and you are architecting uh, cloud over applications with fault tolerance. So this is a good example of using um, block storage to keep your safe information away from instance. Because remember, our instance are cattle so they can be created or removed and you don't have to care about this. You, you need to have all your uh, important point of failure ready and prepared for this scenario. So, okay, again, Cinder it's an optional project so you need to validate that it's available in your cloud and that you can, you have access to create um, this kind of resources. So here is where you can see the volumes and the snapshots. So here I, I, I don't have any volume or snapshot. And instances, I just have one. So I will create an instance for um, simulate the database scenario. So first of all, Let's create a volume. This is the shade function to create a volume. Create volume. You need to specify some parameters. Let's go to the documentation. And basically specify size. The size is in giga, gigabytes. The name and a description. But they are optional parameters. So I will create a volume with a gigabyte um, size called database and the description is just a database volume. So let's create our first volume or first block storage with shape. Running the script, Cinder1. And Okay, done. Let's validate in the OSI cluster. Okay. Yes, I, we have our database volume. So as you can see here, there is a attached to column, but it's empty for this volume because we haven't attached to any that uh, any uh, instance. So I will create an instance for our e scenario. A very simple instance for this the volume. Okay. 
Okay, launching my instance. Nothing special, just a simple instance that will be our database microservice. Okay, so next is to attach my the volume to this instance. Okay. So the name of the instance is this volume and the name of the volume is database. We are getting the server and the volume to send as parameter to the attach volume function. You need to specify it. Okay, I will attach a volume to this instance. This is the volume and this will be the location of this um, device. Okay, let's attach this volume. Couple of seconds. Okay, done. So if I see my volume, now we have the attach to the name of the instance and in this um, in this uh, device so we can we also can validate that in the instance details okay yeah volume is attached okay we have a volume and an instance with a volume attached so following the scenario i will ssh this instance and I will mount the mount the volume to an, a directory in my file system. So every time that I write something in that directory, it will be stored directly directly to the the, the volume. So okay. Yes. Okay, I'm in the test volume instance. Okay, so now I will validate the partition table. So, as you can see, this is the disk. This is the volume, this is a representation of the volume in the instance. This is the, the, the location of the volume. So now I will create, um, in, in this volume, I will do a specify a file system. So I doing this with this comment to prepare the volume to be able to read from my instance. So I'm preparing the file system. Okay, done. So my volume is ready for writing. Okay. And now I will create a directory in the instance to mount, to mount the volume. So so in, in, in this folder is where the volume will be attached. So every, every time that I wrote something here will be stored in the volume. So I will mount my device 
my volume in this form. Okay, ready. So let's go to the volume. Okay, it's empty, it's ready. So imagine that and the, here in your database instance, MySQL is writing in this folder that points right now to the uh, volume. So every time that MySQL writes um, in the database, it will store in the persistent volume. So I imagine that a user is using my app and my SQL is storing everything. So I have these four, another one, this five tables, database information in my in my volume. So as you can see, I'm writing in this directory, but that directory is mount in the volume, so I will I'm able to write them. So okay, something happened with my instance. My I my database instance it's not working, so my Cloudware applications will delete will terminate it but remember i can't recover this data this data because it's stored in the volume so i will um i will um detach well i will delete more i will yeah just uh, doing the the ad scenario more real i will delete this i will terminate the instance so no my data don't worry we are using block storage so no more instance but we have here our our volume so by now, it's not attached to any instance, so we can create a, a, a snapshot just to have a backup of that moment. So I will create a snapshot with create volume snapshot uh, function. You need to specify the volume ID and you can uh, put a name of the snapshot obviously here you, you you need to write like the date for half an historical right okay so i will create oh by the way this instance has gone right so i will close this okay so interact creating a snapshot with shape couple of seconds and okay done so refreshing the page yeah we have our snapshot ready here yes just in case we need to to have backups okay so obviously we are we have a cloud our app so the cloud our app it detect that i don't have um and in that database instance running so I need to create a new one and then attach again my volume and so every uh, so the users we we will not notify nothing because my cloud application is fault tolerance and have all the important data safe so I will create another instance, a new instance. OK. 
Okay. And okay. So I will attach uh, the volume to this instance. Okay, so that's but the name now is that's volume those, that's volume two database, and this is again the the device. Okay, so let first touch to the new database instance. I'm doing this step by step, but obviously with your Cloudware app, this have to be done in microseconds, milliseconds, so. Nobody will notice about this. Okay, so this volume has my uh, volume at the edge. Okay, so let's SSH, SSH this new instance. Okay, and, and now, again, in this instance, obviously, I don't, I don't have anything in, in this folder because it doesn't exist. Remember, it's a new instance, so I will create this, this directory because I want this directory as my uh, fa uh, as my entry point for store everything in my volume. Okay, I have the directory. And now I will mount my volume that it's located here. in my folder, in my database folder. So it's mount. So remember the number of files that we have. Remember my file, my SQL servers. So let's see what is there. And yeah, here we go. Or in our files intact. Nobody noticed about that we lost the MySQL database because Everything was storage on block storage. Thanks to Cinder and Shade. I can create this more more files because my application is still creating more files. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what what else you can do with with shade and cinder? Basically, now we learn how to move a volume between instances and how we can apply this knowledge and the capabilities of OpenStack uh, projects to create all Cloud Aware apps. So now I will detach the instant, the volume from my instance. And at the end, yes, just like last step, I will delete our volume. So. Now is when all the data has gone, will be gone because, well, I explicit delete the volume. So the touch volume function and delete volume. So shade is very stressful with the names of the application of this function and parameters. 
very easy. So now I'm attaching and deleting the Uh, I can't delete because he has a snapshot, so. But. We can see that. The first instruction, the, the touch um, um, was complete, but you can delete the volume because the volume has data, well, not has data, has um, um, a snapshot. So it's like, like a restriction. So yeah, I will delete the snapshots. Okay, and now I will delete the volume, the empty volume. Okay, done. Goodbye, database volume. Well, that's it. I hope everybody enjoy um, using Shade for interact with CF and Cinder. It's very useful. Um, you can see here more um, more functions about. Uh, how to create more, um, how to interact with different uh, functions for Cinder and, up and Swift. We only cover the basic, but still uh, coding and go deeper with your Clarware applications and using and taking advantage of this amazing project. So thank you everybody. Bye.